So this will be a demonstration of the steps involved with stereotactic laser ablation using the Medtronic Visualase system. So uh, this can be done with a number of different stereotactic systems. In this particular case, we're using a Lexel stereotactic frame, the Medtronic navigation station to give us the frame coordinates, and then we'll be using the Medtronic Visualase station. So we're just going to pull up initially an MRI scan that we can use up here on the Medtronic Stealth station. And with that, um, I'll show you rather quickly how to plan uh, a trajectory for amygdala hippocampotomy. That's fine. There's a tumor on this as well, but we're going to ignore that for the moment. So uh, what we can see here is this is an axial uh, T1 MRI scan. So let's just assume that we're going to target the left amygdala hippocampus. So uh, let's go into the targeting mode here. We have to, yeah, we don't need that from frame registration. So for a plan, can zoom this up. And we would spend a lot of time actually on the fine details of this, but that's the head of the hippocampus. So I will create a target. Uh, I'm going to come in through the back of the body of the hippocampus and switch the mouse here for fine control. So I want to come in just under the body of the hippocampus and outside the ventricle. So I'll start this initially as a set entry. You can see that this has created a trajectory that goes through the body of the hippocampus. You can see it traveling through here. I'm going to put it on a trajectory view. And then if I like this, I can continue to bring it out further along this trajectory, all the way out to the surface. And then I can do fine modifications of this as needed to avoid blood vessels. In this particular case, I'm traveling just into the ventricle. If I think that that's important to avoid that, I can modify this a little bit, come a little bit for more inferior. So you can see I can come just under the ventricle. And then I will be entering the hippocampus right about here. You can see I'm in the gray matter of the hippocampus. You can see this is parallel to the lateral mesencephalic sulcus. So if I ablate from here forward, I'll have obtained all the targeting of the amygdala and hippocampus that I need. This can be carried forward. And then I can also carry it more anterior. So you can see we start with a trajectory that takes us through the ideal path through the amygdala hippocampus, but then we carry it out all the way to the surface entry point and all the way to the target, which goes through the amygdala and into the entorhinal cortex of the medial temporal lobe. So let's assume we like this. This would give us the actual frame coordinates that we uh, then put into the Lexel frame, very similar to uh, what Dr. Ponce just showed you for DBS. I won't repeat those steps. So this is, assume this is all set up for the trajectory that we like. Um, so what we require here is a reducing cannula that fits the drill uh, for visual ace. Uh, it's going to ultimately require that we put in a, uh, a 3.2 millimeter uh, twist drill hole that this uh, bolt uh, that will hold the, the visual ace probe will fit. So this has a re uh, reducing cannula that we can then use under stereotactic control to drill a hole through the skull, in this case our mock-up. And I need to give this a little bit more room on the bit. There's a depth guard to avoid skiving uh, and going too deep. That's important since we just want to drill through the bone and possibly the dura, but we don't want to actually go into the brain. Um, that can be measured out ahead of time on the navigation workstation. In this case, we're just working quickly, so just show you in general how it's going to look. So under stereotactic control, place a twist hole. In this case, through plastic instead of drill. Plastic likes to melt. So this is a, a gel brain. Uh, there's gel and you can see there's a model lesion in there. Let's assume that that's the shape of the hippocampus. Uh, because this plastic melts, sometimes it doesn't want to take the uh, bolt, but we'll see how it works here. So now we can raise this up, give ourselves some working space to get the bolt in there. This has an additional reducing cannula that allows us to put a stereotactic alignment rod that will hold our bolt in place. 
So this cannula goes inside of the larger cannula. This can be raised up to give us room to get our bolt in here. And then the aligning rod passes through the bolt and then down just inside the hole that we just drilled in the skull. And then holding this in place allows us to align the bolt as we now feed it down on the alignment rod and screw it into the skull. So this aligning rod is maintaining the bolt along the trajectory that we desire. If this is a real head, usually about 10 good turns is sufficient to make sure that you're through the skull and it's well secured. Once we're satisfied with that, then the alignment rod can come out. These reducing tubes can come out. We can actually move the arc out of the way. And then we would have, we would be able to calculate from the frame to the depth of our target that we have calculated. Uh, let's assume we've already done that. So this is the visual ace cannula. It's a plastic hollow tube with a stiff aligning rod in it, not dissimilar to the aligning rod we just used to put in the bolt. So this allows us to actually, once we've measured the length of the depth that we need from the top of the bolt, we can now actually introduce this into our target. So in this case, there is an actual See, we're actually going into the little marshmallow that's inside the silastic there. So that's our pretend uh, hippocampus. We can take out the aligning rod. This is held securely in place. And then we have the laser fiber itself, which we have pre-measured. Do you have your flashlight there? So this is just a fiber optic cable. Why don't you shine a light to that so you can see. So this is a fiber optic cable with a diffusing tip. You can see we can, in this case, he's just got a little laser pointer there. You can see the green laser light coming to the diffusing tip. Uh, if we were actually doing laser ablation, this would be hooked up to the 15 watt laser source, uh, which would burn your eyes, so we're not doing that. And I'll take a little bit more space now and we'll feed this down into it. So this is of course all a sterile, stereotactic procedure. If this were a real person. And then this will feed down into the cannula most of the time. There we go. This stereo strip has been used to measure to know when it fits down to the very tip of this. And then we pull it back just a little bit. This hollow tube has the ability to circulate saline around it to keep it cool. That's what these connect up to. So this is all secured now. We would hook it up to our irrigant. Blue stripe to blue stripe, clear to clear. And now at this point, um, if we were in the operating room and doing this, we could get an O-arm spin like what you just saw uh, to make sure that this is where we want it to be. Um, we could uh, then, if we're happy with that, we would disassemble the parts of the frame we want to and take the patient to the MRI scanner with this bolt in, the fiber in, and we would protect this as the patient is transported. And then, assuming we now get the patient down in the MRI scanner and we're satisfied with the location of this in the lesion and we're ready to ablate, we'd be imaging uh, on the MRI scanner and those uh, images are being piped directly to the Visual Ace workstation. So this is a mock-up of what it would look like to have a fiber in the hippocampus. And your friendly neighborhood visual ace uh, technician will help get things set up with the MRI scanner. And then we will do a mock ablation here. So there's different split screens that we'll be seeing here. Um, this is showing the anatomical image that we just obtained, showing the fibers where we want it to be. Um, as we start to get live MRI images, we'll start to see actual thermal images, which are pixel by pixel changes in temperature that are occurring based on gradient echo imaging. And the algorithms that are used uh, uh, by the station will actually take that thermal information and be able to historically mark each pixel that's gotten above a certain threshold of temperature that tells us that that, that pixel uh, or that part of the brain has actually been lesioned. And so we create a map over time of of what's been lesion versus what's not. We can stop at any point and get actual anatomical imaging to verify that we've done what we think we have. 
Uh, but in general, the model is very accurate for what will actually uh, be observed on the anatomical imaging afterward. So what we're seeing here is a live, uh, or mock here live image. You can see the thermal change, it's a heat map. And uh, there's a, here's a map of what's actually being lesioned versus the live temperature change. If we were to turn this off, this heat map would go away as the tissue cools down, but the map of what's been ablated would remain. So we can go back and forth. Here it's cooling down because the, the laser has been turned off. Um, and now we've pulled the fiber back. We're starting to ablate a few, uh, about a centimeter behind the first ablation. And you can see the historical map that's building of where we've ablated along this fiber. And so in order to do that, uh, this is being sped up. All you have to do at each stage is turn the laser off, pull the fiber back uh, by a centimeter, and then continue to ablate. So you can see the accumulated ablation that we're, we're getting here along the hippocampus. Um, like I, I spoke in our, I talked to you about in our lecture, just above the, above the hippocampus is the lateral geniculate body. This is the thalamus. So we're watching that very carefully. We can actually put safety thermal markers along that and monitor, monitor the temperature of that to make sure it's not heating up. Uh, we can also look at this in different views. So here is an axial view of the same thing, and we can go back and forth between the sagittal, the axial. We can also view it on different uh, slices. So uh, we can see the uh, sagittal versus the axial. We can go back and forth. We could keep different views on different windows so we can see it all at once. So sped up uh, quickly. Normally this procedure, this part of it would take about 10 to 15 minutes of ablation. Usually there's about three to six minutes of ablation at each particular location in cycles of three minutes. Um, but this is what we've accomplished by ablating in three different locations, two different pullbacks after this. And you can see the final uh, estimate of the damage that we've created in the amygdala and hippocampus. This looks like a nice ablation. And at this point we would stop, get anatomical imaging, flare, T2, diffusion, T1 post contrast, anything else we need to to confirm that the ablation has occurred and make sure that we've accomplished the goals of the procedure. That's it.